U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is currently in the country. She's meeting with government, business and civil society on how to strengthen bilateral relations and address regional and global issues of concern. For reaction to her visit, for, on her visit rather, we are joined by international relations expert Professor John Streamlau. Prof, good morning. Great to speak to you. Can this visit by Janet Yellen on the back of uh, Sergei Lavrov's recent visit uh, to South Africa be seen as a race for Africa? <laughs> no, it can't be seen as a race uh, for Africa. Africa will follow its own course, but it's a reminder of the contrasts between uh, the uh, Putin uh, dictatorship and the war in Ukraine and that is a preoccupation and also of the United States and Europe, but also the more in fundamental question of domestic organization and peace and reconciliation. South Africa is badly divided domestically right now, as we all know. So is the United States. And Janet Yellen's agenda that she articulated uh, last Friday in uh, Dakar, she went to Dakar and then she went to Zambia, which is also undergoing a, a, a democratic transformation, and then to South Africa is very pragmatic. Yesterday, uh, they announced uh, that they had agreement, a bilateral agreement on poaching. Mm. Well, poaching is a real problem. But more importantly, there is the sustainability fund of uh, $8.5 billion that uh, the Western powers have put together in response to the COP27 uh, meeting on, on sustainable energy for, for South Africa. There is the trade and the, uh, the pending African Growth and Opportunity Act renewal and issues about trade and investment, which are huge with America, uh, less so with the Soviet, with the Russians. Uh, a very, very small uh, tr trade and, and, and one, only one investment down here by a r Russian oligarch uh, in a manganese plant. So, so you know, it's, it's, um, it's a very different uh, moment and it's uh, a contrast by their focus on pragmatic uh, issues in the Yellen case. And that's what is, this visit is all about. Professor, you talk about Africa following its own course. Talk to me about this course. I'm, I'm not convinced that Africa is as independent as, as you suggest. Well, look, no one is independent of, of the, the, the planetary uh, forces at work right now, climate change and globalization and other uh, global order issues. Uh, if if uh, uh, Africa was going to really speak with one voice, it would speak with one voice on territorial integrity and sovereign equality with regard to Ukraine. Mm. And look at they are terribly divided. So, uh, you know, I, I, I take your point, but I, I, I was just trying to make a, a plain that the first issue above all, and particularly for the United States and South Africa right now, is internal governance and coherence. You know, only uh, uh, two and a half years ago, uh, Donald Trump was in the White House and, and uh, Africa was, was, was treated with, with the racist attitudes that are endemic to, to the Republicans right now and to the, to the Make America Great crowd that, that brought Donald Trump to power. I, I think they're going to be beaten back by the Democrats uh, as they were in 2020, but it was a very close election. So uh, we're, we're going to face a, a, a very close election here a very contested election here in 2024. So we, you know, we'll see. Uh, but it's, it's really getting your house in order. Now, the just energy transition obviously was on the cards, still on the cards, something that the U.S. and South Africa are talking about. That pledge of $8.5 billion uh, has been made to, to South Africa. But it's, it's a drop in the ocean. South Africa needs $97 billion over the next five years. How much of, of an influence is will the U.S. have on South Africa's move away from, from coal power to, to renewable energy when they don't even have uh, a quarter, 10 percent even, of what they actually require? I, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't exaggerate U.S. interest or influence, and, and uh, that, that's got to be treated very uh, circumspectly because it, it really isn't that great on, on look at look at the defiance that South Africa is showing on Ukraine. Uh, 
for whatever reasons, uh, and, uh, and and the merits of that dispute are, are uh, not going to be resolved, and this trip is not even addressing that. It's addressing things like poaching. Mm. It's very practical, uh, but you can do what you can do to remind people that there is a complex relationship between the United States, between the Americans and South Africans that go back to the period when the U.S. supported uh, apartheid, that go back to uh, slavery and racism, that that are are endemic to both of our societies, and we're struggling to deal with them. And we do it in economics, uh, we do it in educational exchanges, we do it in a, in a whole host of, of of relations which make the American South African relations very complex and and very important to both countries. Now, the West has up, up the ante on Russia with the heavy artillery being supplied by the U.S. and Germany, as we've recently learned. Will South Africa at some point be forced to pick a side? And if not, can it be a casualty of this war? Well, you, you hearken back to, the, the, to the, the, the House resolution on the malign activities of Russia in Africa Act, and that has been a dead letter. Uh, Putin and told, uh, I mean, um, Biden supposedly told uh, Cyril Ramaphosa that he would never sign it. The Senate's not taking it up. Mm. I think there is an appreciation that Africa has to sort out its own problems and America has to sort out its own problems. And yes, there is a com competitiveness. And yes, the U.S. is concerned about the Wagner Group. Everyone should be concerned about the Wagner Group. It, it's a bunch of mercenaries who... who uh, do violence and human rights abuses in the service of uh, of, of, uh, of, of Russian influence here. Uh, but it, it, that's not where the preoccupation is. The preoccupation is whether Putin has a future in light of the surprise resistance that the Ukrainians have shown for national sovereignty and territorial integrity, uh, which is a bedrock principle <laughs> that South Africa signs up for, or at least formally uh, endorsed and, and did in the aftermath of the invasion, but then has walked it back because it's got other issues that it wants to address, uh, like uh, the future of the BRICS. So it's complicated. Well, staying on that same issue of uh, war, the joint military drills a plan with Russia and China by South Africa, and um, South Africa said hosting such exercise with friends was a natural course of relations, and I think uh, Naledi Pando uh, said those words, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, will, the, will the U.S. Uh, view this in, in any way other than that, that is a natural course of relations amongst friends? Well, <laughs> David Feldman, uh, uh, the spokesman for the U.S. Embassy yesterday, issued a statement that was very critical of that, but it's not infecting the relations between Yana Yellen and uh, uh, the finance minister, as you reported earlier, or, or President Ramaphosa, who, who, who saw, saw uh, Janet Yellen yesterday. Um, you know, it, it, life goes on, but at this moment, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty, but the real uncertainty is the future of South African democracy. And I think that is of concern to Americans. But the future of U.S. democracy is also at risk under the polarization uh, that, it, that has occurred that the Trump administration brought to the surface uh, and probably usefully. But that's going to have to be struggled out by Americans fighting with Americans. And just as uh, I don't know who you're going to vote for in 2024, mm. but um, uh, <laughs> you've got a real uh, 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 the dilemma on your hands. So I want to take you back to uh, U.S. Sec Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and her visit to, to Africa. She's obviously been to, to Zambia. She's been to Senegal. She, she is here in South Africa at the moment. She's visiting a, a couple more countries in that 10-day uh, whirlwind tour, if you, if you will. Is there a common thread to, to her visits? Yes, of course there is. And she articulated it in a, a very easily available a set of remarks in Dakar, Senegal, and of course Macky Sall is, uh, is the chairman of the AU right now. Or is a, is Senegal is a democracy. Zambia has uh, is recovering from a huge debt overload uh, from the, the Chinese that funded and and is struggling to uh, figure out a way to move forward as democracy. 
and South Africa is trying to move forward as a democracy. Compare that to Lavrov's sits to Eswatini, which is going to get some military assistance to help the king, I guess. And then uh, Eritrea, which is also a, a, a very problematic country. And that's that. And he's off back to, to, uh, to attend to the, the, uh, the real issue which is facing Russia right now, which is the resistance by the Ukrainians with the help of, of uh, NATO powers. But the NATO powers didn't step in to assist uh, Ukraine until it showed it was determined to fight for its national sovereignty and self-determination. So, mm. you know, it, 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 it's not a, not, not a simple picture. Now, finally, before we let you go, Professor, President Cyril Ramaphosa has called on the West to lift sanctions on Zimbabwe previously. Is that something that's likely to, to be on the agenda? Is he likely to raise this issue? I don't think, I mean, I think it, it, rhetorically it's, um, you know, the sanctions are against a government which is terrible. I mean, look at the, the problem we have with Zimbabweans down here because they can't get work in Zimbabwe, which was a little gem before uh, uh, Mugabe became uh, uh, such a dictator. And, and uh, Zimbabwe is a special problem for South Africa, and the U.S. recognizes that, I think. Uh, but it, 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 if, if Cyril Ramaphosa wants, for diplomatic reasons, to um, to raise the sanctions issue, I, I don't have any problem with that. Professor John Streamer, I appreciate your time this morning. Now